scared me how how did you get in here how did you even find my shop you know who are you working well uh, okay you're here now it's fine what can I help you with video right yeah um has been a little while hasn't it since I've uploaded a video um well we could finish a project together <laughs> yeah, you're right that's silly who would do that um you could play with the lasers some more lasers are always fun no, getting kind of burnt out on the laser thing. Yeah. Um, ooh. Well, tell you what, since you're here, I've got a list of potential video ideas. I kind of keep in my back pocket. Let's run through them together and see if there's something that you like. All right, let's see what's on the uh, old to-do list. Well, I can't do that anymore. You know, I don't think I've accumulated enough tools yet. Can't do that. That would break the time-space continuum. Uh, you know, I'm sure they'll finish it any day now, probably the next episode. So I guess I just leaves playing around with the high-speed camera. The high-speed chatter video was fun because we're doing something that was specifically outside of the comfort zone of the machine, right? We're working in a material that it has a hard time with anyway, using feeds and speeds that were known to induce chatter, specifically to get it captured on high-speed footage. But it'd be really interesting to see what happens at high speed when you're working in materials like aluminum, which a machine really doesn't have a problem with using known good recipes. I've become a big fan of these single flute cutters while working in aluminum. The large gullet means it's basically impossible to weld chips. They do a really good job evacuating chips from deep pockets. Unfortunately, this cutter has seen better days and it's developed a chip on the corner because, well, I've abused it and used it quite a bit. So while I could have filmed this particular cutter, I really wanted to get some like pristine footage and not something of, you know, an end mill blowing itself up because there's a chip on the corner. So I went looking around for a new replacement tool and I kind of got sidetracked looking through Daytron's catalog. If you're not familiar, Daytron makes some very cool milling machines, but what's interesting to you and I is that they also make their own line of carbide tooling. And this is particularly interesting because their machines are high spindle speeds, high feed rate, gantry style machines, essentially what my router wishes it could grow up and become. And so a lot of the things that Daytron optimizes their tooling for sort of applies to our much, much lower end desktop machines. While looking through their catalog, there is a particular tool that caught my eye called the cross cutter. And this is like a serrated corn cob style roughing tool, but it's a single flute, which is not really something I'd seen before. So I reached out to Daytron and they were kind enough to provide me with two tools to test, a six millimeter single flute end mill and the six millimeter cross cutter. Now this isn't a sponsored video. Daytron didn't ask me to say anything and they're not looking at this video before it gets published, but to be completely transparent, they did provide these tools for free and between you and me, if you can keep a secret, they forgot to ask for them back. So that's the situation. Now you know, let's get on with it. So what caught my eye about the cross cutter is the geometry is basically a two flute end mill, but the serrations mean only one flute is ever touching the work at any particular point in time. So it acts like a single flute. And thinking about it, this is really the only way you could design a roughing tool because if you just put serrations in a single flute, you would have parts of the work that never get machined because every time around that serration is always skipping that piece of the work. And so you need two flutes to get the staggering effect, but it still basically acts like a single flute, which I don't know, I, just, I think it's a really cool geometry. Right, so let's get into it. This first cut is 24,000 RPM, 100 inches per minute, half inch depth of cut, and 35 thou width of cut, which is uh, about 15% of the six millimeter end mill. This was filmed at 15,000 frames per second, which is why the resolution's a little bit on the low side. And honestly, there's not a whole lot to say. It's just a really nice cut. This is a recipe I've used a bunch of times in the past, so I, I know it works pretty well. When you slow it down, you can see the chips just kind of serenely floating by, which is pretty cool to see. The surface finish looks a little worse on video than it was in real life. This is just the high intensity light coming in at an angle makes it look a lot rougher than it actually is. But there are some striations and that's pretty standard from these single flute end mills from what I've seen. Folks are always curious about conventional milling versus climb milling, especially in the last video. 
So here is a conventional cut using the exact same parameters. And to be honest, you really can't tell much of a difference, mostly because of the orientation of the fog buster. It's blowing chips away from the conventional cut. And these long, thin chips tend not to kind of get stuck or pack up. The single flute ejects them really well, which is one of the reasons I like to use single flute cutters anyway, is that they evacuate chips pretty well. So not a whole lot to see here. It basically looks the same, just going in the other direction. One thing I have always been curious about is if the single flute has a noticeable slowdown when the flute engages the work. And this is theoretically something that would happen with any cutter, but it would be potentially easier to see with a single flute just because there's only one flute and it only takes up about half of the revolution. So maybe we could see the flute slow down when it engages and speed up a little bit when it disengages. And looking at this high speed footage, it kind of looks like it is, but you also can't really tell if it's an optical illusion. Like I, I can't convince my brain one way or another. So I took a clip of this, I opened it in image J, selected a little region of interest up on the tool holder where it flashes between dark and light colors as the tool goes around. And analyze that stack of images to see the intensity over time. And this gives kind of a periodic pattern as the tool holder rotates. The next step is export that data, load it up in a quick Python script to identify the peaks between all the rotations, and then analyze the distance between each peak to see if there's any variation in frames. And the answer is that there's not. As far as I can see, it's a pretty consistent number of frames between each peak, meaning that it's rotating at a fairly constant speed. And this is a really rough, crude way to look at it, but it was enough to satisfy my curiosity. And that leaves us with the cross cutter next. But before we take a look at that footage, if you like this sort of high speed video of stuff around the home shop, leave a comment down below and let me know what you'd like to see. I think aluminum chip welding would be particularly interesting, so I might do that next. And if you think I've earned your subscription, I'd really appreciate it. It's like 12 degrees in my shop right now and every new subscriber helps keep motivation up to go out there and get some work done. Okay, let's check out this cross cutter. So the first thing that's immediately obvious is that chips are flying everywhere with this tool. And that kind of makes sense because the serrations make tiny little chips. They essentially leave the flute much sooner than the long stringy chips from the standard single flute. So they have a tendency just to kind of get flung in whichever direction they're coming off the flute from. You can see the chips at the bottom of the tool tend to come towards the camera while the chips at the very top of the tool kind of go back out of frame away from the camera and everything in between has varying angles as they come off. You can see some fun oddities like a half of a chip tends to get stuck at the very top of the workpiece and it spins around on the tool before smacking into the back of the workpiece and getting ejected. I can see why this is such a useful tool for roughing. These tiny chips don't pack up like the long stringy ones do, especially when you have a, a pretty deep depth of cut. And the fact that they are going everywhere means they're also ejecting or evacuating the cut pretty efficiently because they're just leaving the work area as soon as possible. And being smaller, they also get thrown away from the tool by the fog buster a lot more quickly just because there's less mass. If I was more motivated, I could probably do some analysis to see how much faster they're moving than the single flute chips, but eh, I'm a little lazy. It is interesting to note the surface finish, so I don't know how well you can tell on the video, but the surface finish was considerably better than the single flute cutter. And then these are the same parameters, nothing's changed other than the tool. I don't really have a good explanation as to why this is. If someone knows, please leave a comment down below why this would be the case. You can see a little bit of a line that's characteristic of these corn cob style serrated cutters, but it's not nearly as bad as I was expecting. Usually these corn cobs just leave a terrible surface finish. But in this case, the, the finish is really good. It's almost mirror-like in a lot of places. And that line that's left is not really noticeable. You can't catch it with a fingernail. So I would say the finish here is markedly better than the single flute traditional cutter. And honestly, that really surprised me. And here's an example of a conventional cut. Apologies for my missed coolant. It was going a little crazy this time. So there's a lot more coolant than there should be in the cut. And that did make the chips a little stickier than they should have been. One thing that's interesting here, because of the angle of the fog buster and the way the chips kind of get thrown off this particular cutter, there is more recutting going on here. 
with the the long stringy chips of the single flute they got carried away pretty much immediately away from the cut but here the little chips particularly towards the bottom of the tool tend to get thrown around the tool a bit more and then they get caught by the air blast and pushed back into the cut so there's actually some chip recutting every once in a while but on the back side of the tool which is not what you'd really expect from conventional this is mostly just an artifact of where the Fogbuster is in this particular case. I imagine it would be different if it was on the other side, but I thought it was interesting, and you can see some little chips swirling around because of it. Okay, well I think that's all I have for you today. Big thanks again to Daytron for sending over these tools. I really appreciate it, and they were a lot of fun to play with, and I hope you all enjoyed the high-speed footage of it. Thanks for watching. Steel, which is a difficult material for this machine anyway, we were running a snowplow.